ever have a bad day that just got a little bit worse? That's today. <laughs> Today is the day of like emergencies. So we had two things that happened today that kind of consumed any of their plans that we were maybe gonna have. So we're gonna share that to you. First, you saw this tree. My neighbor, a good neighbor, you know, they do exist in this world. But a good neighbor, I guess, saw it, heard it, something, I don't know, but uh, tree fell. And it fell on our fence that happens to be where the buffalo are, same pasture. So we called us up, he sent us this photo. And as you can see, of course, it is mangled and dropped and this is what's left over so we've got all this line he let me know that it was happened and he kind of cleared it off so he cut it that's the other half and then we still got the half over here so we we're trying to go ahead and deal with this earlier today it was a water issue as you know we're getting some water lines trenched we're trying to get electric power done because we're going to put a pump in all this other stuff to make sure troughs are going good well we have water for our yearlings that's water we pump manually into that 1,000 gallon tank, and this is my wife's struggle with that earlier today. Seriously, with all the non-rain, why is there so much grass and asphalt? Okay, so right over my shoulder, you can see the water trough for the yearling pen that we've been filling up. And what we've been doing is we have a trash pump that we put into our small little pond lake, and we suck the water up and we pull it along these hoses all the way to this thousand gallon tank right here. And we load it up about once a week and we've been able to use that water and the animals have been alive, so all good things, right? But today, the emergency water day, the thing that I didn't ever want to have to do again <laughs> is load it back up on the trailer. So, there's the trailer, there's the tank. This is thing's gonna be heavy, and I have less teenage helpers with me this time, so we've gotta go collect some water from the lake that still has water. At least have something for the rest of the week while we finish the rest of the projects. Go ahead, Clark. And let out whatever's in there so we can manhandle this. So it looks like, wow, look at all that water you're wasting. Well, it's gonna go right back into their pasture, so hopefully help feed some grass, weeds, whatever. But there's no way that the kids and I are gonna be able to manhandle this tank if we don't drain it first. Oh, good job, guys. It moved. Can you guys get tipped up is the question. All right. Clark, can you hold it? And they, right, you, somebody's got to push and somebody's got to catch. Wow, I'm impressed. All right. I got it. You guys need to tip it a little more up. This is scary. All right, all right. Clark, Clark, spot me. Switch places. Hurry. Hurry. All right, push, push, push. Push, Clark. Push? Yeah, push. Okay. There we go. I'm going to move. That's OK, I need to back it up, and you guys need to stay out of the way. All right, you guys are awesome. Still peeing on you a little bit. <laughs> All right, we need over the wheels. Ew, that's dirty. Yeah, it's going to be dirty now. We gotta strap down this guy because once we get a, about 700 gallons, then we can tow him away. You can do it! Alright, obviously you can see how much evaporation has been happening. I mean, there's still a decent sized pond spot, so we're going to be able to get the 700 gallons we need right now, so it's fine. But all of this, all the way past the truck, all the way over here, should all be water. Yeah, not so much. All right, so we got to get set up, get the pump in as deep as we can get the screen 
and then start loading it up to the tank. You can hear all the little froggy hoppings. There's a lot of frogs in this pond water. And get ready to sit up there and fill. Clark's got our green sucker hose. That'll go in the water. So he needs to get connected. Right down there. Yeah, frogs probably can't go through the screen. All right, so this screen is gonna help not collect frogs or fish or mud, whatever smaller than that gets to be sucked up. Let's find a spot for it. So the pump's over here now, leading all the way back over there. Let's get this party started. lot of uh, gross mud. Uh, that is some shallow water. <laughs> These little holes were basically covered with all that little junk. It just was like trying so hard to suffocate it. So I tried to use the shovel to separate a spot where the water could get through. It's probably the worst time filling it up with debris in the way. And then I had to hold it up like that so that way it would be submerged in the water because sideways these guys would start getting air in them and then you'd lose suction. We need some water guys. We got the trailer with the tank all the way back up here for the yearlings. So we will have water for the rest of this week. The challenge now is what's the solution? Uh, we're just disconnecting up the trailer, leave it here, and uh, we're about done. I'm gonna feed it over here, you grab some hair off of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that pony. Oh, that's a dense piece of wood. This sucker is about 10 inch diameter. And this is, look at this guy. Inside it doesn't look super bad. This is a trunk that was cut off by our neighbor. I'm not a treeologist, so I don't know if this is like a, okay. I'd say it's an oak, but I, everything looks like an oak, I swear, everything does. But some of these trees need to come down, yes, I admit. This one snapped about 12 to 15 feet up. There has not been wind storms, like I can't. You are just too weak, so it doesn't I don't know, mean. it just doesn't make sense. And the amount of pile that's left over doesn't look like it's big enough that I would have said, hey, it's, it's leaning or it's got some big foliage. Like this guy back up here, so look at this guy. That guy's got a lean on him, but this one didn't. So anyway, we're just gonna cut him up real quick, get him out of the way. But really the big thing that we gotta do is make sure that we take care of this fence, fix it up a little bit so the buffalo don't escape. This just means I'm allowed to use my chainsaw, which means that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, this is a steel MS 171.
Anyway, it's a nice light one. I've got the Farm Boss. It's the what, 271, I think? 270? I don't know, whatever. It's Farm Boss. Anyway, this one is big enough to do what we need to do. It wasn't that big of a tree. So this one's lighter as well. I've already topped up with gas and oil, so it's just a matter of seeing if we can get it started and going from there. If you want to call me anything that has the word big in it, I'm all for it. Next is the wire. So we've got to go through and get all these wire clips off, T-post clips. So that what we can do is get the fence fixer and pull this whole line taut, tight, whatever you want to call it. So it's a matter of getting all these down. The bottom lines may not be as bad, but we will check them as well. But obviously the top line is sagging and these are definitely loose. The process of getting these things off is just the reverse of putting them on. They have a clip on the right hand side. You'll see one here. We're not going to take this one off, but you would just wind it backwards. And then eventually it comes up and over and then you take it off. So fairly simple, pretty easy. We think the bottom two lines after checking them are pretty good. The third one up, we'll probably just tighten it anyway. But a lot of slack. There's a limit of how much you can pull at one time with this Texas fence fixer, and we need to retighten the bolt right over here a little bit. It's kind of wobbling, but you can see we're on our last chain link. We tried to gripping as much as we can inside to try and make up extra slack. It's still looser than I think I would like, but let's first get this done and then worry about doing maybe round two. There gets to be a point where you just can't tighten these things very much. Like it's a lot of effort to do all this. They have these like J hooks. Some of you guys is, have left some comments on it. We just need to go get those. You just kind of slide it over the barbed wire, rotate it once and it latches on. And that would help with the slight looseness like this. But otherwise, I don't know if it's worth trying again. Yeah, trying a whole nother. Well, evidently. Maybe we would. But anyway, those are still good. Anyway, we need to get a few of those. You can see this is where it hit. The tree fell here. Besides, of course, you got the debris. Okay, all right. But 
it took all the, sh the coil out of it, slid a barbed wire over, and as you go down the line, this is uncoiled, this is uncoiled, and that's where the clip was, and it probably held right here, and it just pulled this guy straight down and un undid it. So, barbed wire is pretty tough. What we use is gaucho wire. It's a high tensile four point barb from uh, Breckert? Beckart? Beckert? Anyway, something like that. Let's try and do a few seconds of it. Found that wire spot. So it's right over here. So we put the caution just to let us know where along the fence was so we could see it from a distance. But you can see it snapped there. And somewhere over here. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a cool enough splice for me to start doing some Texas fence fixering. I'm just going to take off the old stuff and see if we can splice it together in a Y config. Um, or we're going to have to splice in a whole new piece and then do that configuration. So. so what I'm thinking is this was actually not Texas Fence Fixers. Holy crap, we broke a line there before. Okay, well, maybe that's where the break was. <laughs> maybe that is where the break was. But this might not be, because look, I'm gonna let go of that piece. This is another spliced right. side right here. And this is a lot of winding, so maybe this is where the fence is fixed. So this is almost together, but it's not quite. That sucks. Urgh. Plan B, we're gonna have a splice and splice. All right, here's our sacrificial piece. Okay, I'm gonna take this barb off, leave that much, and we're gonna wire it into this other guy. I have about that far between them that they're spaced right now, but it's all a matter of getting these barbs off, and then we're gonna run them together and splice them in. Now let's go to it. Now you'll notice on these barbed wires they will undo one direction and then right here you'll see this line comes and goes right back over. So I'm going this way. Now I need to go the opposite way. Whoop. And every so often it just folds back over on itself. Second why. You always think that once you set up a fence, it's never to be touched again, it's just perfect, but all crap happens to fences. Anyway, sun's going down. Obviously, this takes a little bit of time to do all these splicings, and I shouldn't have cut this middle guy until I figured out exactly where we're at, because right now, woohoo! Our whys are right there. Ugh. Total suck, man. I don't know. Let's figure this out. I don't know. Gotta figure something out. Alright, so thinking on the fly, our solution was to wind this up tighter, wind this one up tighter. So now we only have, gosh, I don't know, what is that? Five, four or five inches at best. And if we pull it tight, let's spread these guys out a little bit. Okay. There we go. We can get them to just about touch. All right, now this isn't perfect, guys. <clears throat> this isn't ideal. This is on the fly kind of stuff. Which way did I just go? I gotta go the other way.
Now, naturally, I would want this bigger, but a good. I think it's holding. Now we just gotta put one tension on it with this fixer and see if that holds. I sure hope it does. All right, it's getting dark. We gotta finish this, we got a couple more to do, but I wanted to mention the other emergency thing from this morning, that was when Charlotte was doing the water. We have a thousand gallon tank, and of course it's just, we've gotta get better water. The lake is drying up, um, it's super hot, they drink a lot of water, which is natural. Our goal is actually take them out of that pen and put them in our two and a half acres, which we're gonna finish a little later on, but we can do gravity feed with that trough once we get it installed. We can't do that with where they're at right now. So we also would have to buy a pump and whether it be solar or whether it just be electric, have to wait for the electric to hook up. So we're kind of waiting on a lot of those things to be able to get any powered water or any kind of flow over to the pens apart from that thousand gallon tank. So anyway, kids dismantled it, taken apart. I'm gonna finish up this and try and get them done. All right guys, let's get out of here. I think I went between these trees. This is pretty steep. Now, if you're if you're doing this ranching thing you'll have plans you'll have to-do lists and the to-do list keeps getting longer and you just got to prioritize some stuff right now the lake getting the way it is is probably not the cleanest water we understand that we're just on the cusp of being able to get that pump and everything here but this is we got to change so we got to do something different because it doesn't look like the timing is what we thought stay tuned with us as we quickly fix up that two and a half acres, finish that all up. We got to get some water and some trough over there and move all of our little calves sitting over there. I don't even know if you can see them, mm -hmm. but there's our calves. So we're gonna move those calves over to the two and a half acres because that could be gravity fed. I would love if every pasture was a gravity fed system because I don't want to worry about electric, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. So anyway, we're gonna do as many as we can. So. Thanks for joining us guys on this emergency day on the ranch and we will catch you next time. Have a good day. Bye.